Good morning, Card Beauty. It's RJ back with another video. So let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day. Picked up a book called Mike Schmidt, Baseball's King of Swing. At one time I did possess this book, uh, but it ceased to exist in my collection at some point, and I recently purchased it off the bay to bring it back. It is by a man named Stan Hockman, who is a who was a journalist in the Philadelphia region for many, many years. It is done, copyrighted 1983, a little paperback book from Random House Sports Library. It's made more for young people than for adults, but it is great in that it gives a really good, quick read synopsis of Mike's life up until the 1983 season, which is fantastic if you want to know a little history about Mike Schmidt. So that is your random Mike Schmidt item of the day, my random baseball item of the day. Have a card here from 2000. I'm sorry, 1992 Topps Gold set a draft pick card of a Mr. John Farrell. I think this is the same John Farrell who had some years as a manager in baseball later on. Uh, but that is your random baseball item of the day. I actually, actually, I'm going to set this down here. I actually picked up a complete set of Topps Gold. They actually released it in. Uh, factory set boxes later on in the year after they um, had already randomly inserted it into packs all year long. They put out a whole set in a factory set box. So I picked up one of those from a vendor at a flea market. Unfortunately, I didn't do my due diligence and open it up. Turns out it was uh, missing a good 200 cards or so. Very upset about that, but you know, what are you going to do when you buy a box from a flea market vendor? So I had to I still have to go through and pick up some of the cards I do not yet have. Working it on the tradingcarddatabase.com, I was able to pick up this one of John Farrell. So that is your random baseball item of the day. Today's trivia question. Here is your prize that you'll be going for. Really cool uh, card from this year's Topps Heritage. Corbin Carroll rookie card. One of the hotter, hotter rookies of the year this year. Uh, this is his rookie card. He is uh, doing pretty good, last I saw. I don't know if he's still holding his own. Don't, I'm not following the Rookie of the Year talk, but uh, it's a fairly well-centered, nice card of Corbin Carroll, if you can answer this question. Uh, yes or no? Uh, <clears throat> so, has there ever been a team that swept the major awards? So, for example... Um, has there ever been a case where the MVP, the Cy Young, and the Rookie of the Year, when the, the winners of those three major awards were all on the same team in that year? Now, uh, I will say there has been many times when um, a, there have been players who won the Rookie of the Year uh, or the MVP, or the Cy Young and the MVP, or the Cy Young and the Rookie of the Year. Individual players have done it. I will say that no individual player has swept all three. So you never had a pitcher who was so good in his rookie year that he got the MVP, the Cy Young, and the Rookie of the Year. But it still remains possible that somebody, or some team, I should say, won, swept all three awards in the same year. So... Yes or no, did it ever happen? If your answer is yes, tell me the year and the team. All right, that is your question. Uh, the Corbin Carroll card there is your prize. Now, I'm going to take a moment and flip the camera because today's video is a discussion about the state of the hobby. I heard a lot of people doing that, so I'm going to give you my take on the hobby. So give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, and I'm back. Um, I've seen a lot of videos recently. Maybe it's because the, the, the National just happened and people are more aware right now than typically about what the state of the hobby is. Now, uh, a little background of me. My relationship with the hobby started when I was a kid collecting in 78. It was the first year I collected. collected up to 84. I've told the story many times. Out of it for a while, started back up again in, uh, briefly in 87, went hog wild beginning in 89. And I was, you know, all in on the hobby. Um, stayed that way till about the mid 90s, got out of it. Um, 
kept on collecting complete sets, started getting one complete set of Topps cards every year for a while. Stopped that, went through a divorce and sold everything I had practically. Uh, and then right around 2019, just before COVID hit, decided to get back into the hobby and I've got more cards now than I ever had before. So um, I've been around the hobby a long time, back in the, uh, like I said, that in the period between 89 and 94-ish, when I was buying a lot, I was also heavily into autographed baseballs. I was buying the tickets and there was a show near me three, four times a year, a big show with huge autograph guests. And I at one time had, I'll just say, a lot of autographs. I won't tell you who they were, but let's say they were the bigger names in the hobby, in ever in the hobby. And I had a lot of great autographs. And again, everything was sold uh, several years ago and I'm rebuilding my collection. So I do know a lot about the hobby, uh, participated in all aspects of the hobby to some degree. Uh, I was never much of a vintage card collection, although I did have several T206 cards at one time. But um, I'm certainly a history buff. I study the game. I've read you know, thousands of books on baseball just because I'm so passionate about it. Uh, so I'm a big history buff, and going about the history of baseball, you learn about the history of card collecting. So I do know a lot about the hobby, not as much as some of the bigger name collectors, simply because they collect the vintage stuff and they know the history, like Blue Jacket 66, you know, Dave over there probably knows, you know, 50 times more than I do. My Angini is going to know a lot more than I do. But again, I'm just giving you my impression of the state of the hobby because I've seen so many other people doing that recently. And one of the things I want to say right now is, it's going to sound odd, but I want you to hear my reasoning. What is the state of the hobby? I don't care. It's, it's, it's a weird thing to say. But in my opinion, the people who ask the question, what is the state of the hobby, are interested because they want to know how that question is going to affect the value of their collections. I mean, <clears throat> that is why people slab their cards. Now, here is a card from, I think it's 2019. So, so the 2019 Topps Archives Honus Wagner Gold Parallel Set. So this card is special to me because when I got back into the hobby, this was the first card I sent into PSA to get it graded. Now, uh, <clears throat> at the time... I actually thought, hey, it's a gold parallel. Maybe it's a one of one. This will be uh, really valuable someday. Well, no, it's just a, you know, a gold parallel. It's thousands of them out there too. But I got it graded anyway. So I do have some graded cards in my collection. Thanks to Ray over at um, Ray from Philly. Shout out to Ray. I got into the Mike Schmidt basic collection. So I picked up all 47 cards graded uh, from the Mike Schmidt set. And I began a couple other um, PSA graded card sets. Now, I am not a person who cares much about the value of my cards. Now, anybody who says they don't care about the value of the cards is lying to you. It doesn't matter. I, I don't care who he is. Because we all want to know. We either want to know because we're, we care about investing in cards. We care about um, the value if we want to sell or deal in cards. But anybody who's like me who just, I'm a collector. I don't think too much about dealing cards. I mean, I've, I've sold many cards in the past. I've been thinking for a long time about I need to sit down with somebody and have a big old yard sale and sell off a lot of the extra stuff I have. I've got so much extra stuff. I've got to have a, got to do something to get rid of it. So, but I don't pay attention to the value. I, I, I follow my value. I track it, but I'm not overly concerned with it. I'll give you a good example uh, some people may have remembered that I, a couple of years ago, I, I participated in a break with Kevin's Budget Card Breaks. Shout out to Kevin over at Kevin's Budget Card Breaks. He hasn't done a break in a while, but I love getting into his breaks where he does. And nobody had picked the Yankees during this one break. I think it was a stadium club product. I'm sure, I'm sure it was a stadium club product because that's the card I got from him. Anyway, I got a state, I bought into the Yankees with the other cards I had bought. And I, and I, one, one of the things Kevin ripped that day was a stadium club autograph of Derek Jeter, numbered to 15. 
at the time it was opened, brand new Stadium Club 2020 or whatever it was, I think the card was selling because it was of 15. It was a very limited edition card and a lot of people want it. I think that it went for, it was selling for like a thousand bucks. Now it's come down since I think when I saw it on the bay years, a couple months ago, years ago, it was $500 or something like that. Anyway, I took that to a show back in March. I figured out I want to, I had other cards with me, but I wanted, there was cards I wanted to pick up for sets I was working on. And when I say sets, I'm working on the PSA set registry, all time Phillies set which has 34 cards, including Richie Ashburn's rookie card, Robin Roberts' rookie card, Pete Rose's rookie card, Chuck Klein, early Gowdy's card, all those things. I wanted to pick up one of those cards, but hopefully trade for it instead of buying it. So I found a guy who had um, <clears throat> a Robin Roberts card, wanted $120 for it. I wanted the card, and I, I was trying to sell or trying to trade with him some of the, my, the other lower order cards I had. He wouldn't take him. Uh, it was easy to see the guy was a New York fan, so I offered him the Jeter card. How much would you give me for this Stadium Club of 15 Jeter card? And he was like, ching, ching, ching. His dollar signs are going off. I said, what do you want for it? I said, straight up with the Robin Roberts card. And he took it. And just after I had done it, I thought to myself, you know what I should have done? I should have asked him how much so I had a dollar about dollar amount to, sh to shop for, but I didn't think about it in time. Instead, it was a straight up trade. My Jeter for his Robin Roberts, which was raw. I still had to get it graded, uh, and it came back at two. I showed that off uh, several a couple months ago when I got it back. But I gave up my Derek Jeter of fifteen autograph Stadium Club card for a raw Robin Roberts uh, fifty or forty nine Bowman. A lot of people might think to yourselves, you were such an idiot. I can't believe you did that. And and part of me thinks, okay, but the majority of me thinks, I didn't need that card. What do I care? The reason I'm talking about this is, again, the value, the concentration on value. And this is one of the reasons I said I don't care about the state of the hobby. The hobby is just that. It's, it's For me, it's a hobby. I'm here collecting cards, making these videos, because I love the hobby so much. I love baseball so much. Um, I'm never going to get a Mickey Mantle 52 tops. I don't mind. I've got reprints. I think they look pretty. I love them. I'm happy with that. I don't need to have somebody come and tell me my collection's not good enough because it doesn't have a 52 Mantle or it doesn't have vintage cards or it doesn't have this. I collect because I want to collect. I've got a channel that has less than 400 subscribers on it and routinely gets maybe 30 people watching it. You know, I, I get maybe 30 viewers a, an episode. And that doesn't bother me. You know, th there's a little bit of me who wants to say, hey, why doesn't why don't more people watch my videos? Well, the reason more people don't watch my videos is because I don't spend a lot of time making them look beautiful. They don't making them look, I don't add graphics and pizzazz and music and things like that. I just turn on the video and start talking, showing off the cards I want to show off. That's why I don't have a lot of subscribers. I haven't got a, I haven't got time to do more, so I'm happy to do this, get the few viewers I can, and go along my merry way. Um, to me, that's the, my joy in this hobby, is collecting what I can collect, showing it off to people, and hopefully they get a wow, that's, I, I get back a wow, that's great. Um, that, to me, is the hobby. People who buy cards, either collect them or trade them, and show them off to their friends. That's the hobby. This dealing and buying and the people who do nothing but deal. I know a, shard co a, card, I know a card shop owner who told me he doesn't even collect cards. I was like, oh my gosh, why, would you, why are you even in this business? He's in it to make money. He thought cards would be a good way to make money. There's a lot of collectors out there who, you know, they, they'll flip all the cards. And, and that's fine, but the state of the hobby, to me, is more important who's in it and whether they're enjoying it. If the National has 100,000 people attending it one year, 
and then the next year, 200,000 people show up. That would be a better state of the hobby, wouldn't it? But if, if it dropped down to 10,000 who showed up at the National, would that mean the state of the hobby was poor? I don't think so. The state of the hobby is, are there a lot of people buying cards and collecting cards and trading cards? Are there a lot of kids who are coming in to continue the hobby? I mean, that to me is the state of the hobby. I don't, I'm not going to pick on anybody and say grading, people who grade cards are ruining the hobby because they're, they're, they're spiraling the value out of control. I'm not going to say, hey, I'm a set collector. Why the heck aren't there more set collectors? Don't people understand how great it is to collect sets? I'm not going to say, hey, why don't more people collect raw cards? Or you should go to vintage. Vintage is where it's at versus modern cards. I don't, pay, I don't understand how anybody can spend $4 million on a card that's only five years old. You know, how could anybody, how could anybody invest in a PSA 10 Mike Trout card when there's 5,000 of them versus a PSA 10 Mickey Mantle 52 tops when there's only like two of them? How could you do, be so stupid? People collect what they want. And if they have good time collecting what they want, then the state of the hobby is good. If nobody's collecting and buying packs anymore, if nobody rips anymore, if nobody's out there buying and having fun with the hobby, then the state of the hobby is bad. What happens at the national is irrelevant. What happens, you know, um, on YouTube theoretically is irrelevant. Although I think YouTube and the number of people on YouTube, it's a much better judge of the state of the hobby than how many people showed up at the national. There's a thousand reasons why people don't show up at the national, but when people on their own are out there making videos and posting them so we can all see. That means the card, the state of the hobby is really on fire because that's a groundswell of people on their own making stuff for us to enjoy. That's where you can tell the state of the hobby is good because so many people are getting involved. It, the state of the hobby is good when card shops are coming back. Um, you know, I know that you, you remember back in the day, back in the early 2000s, card shops were almost non-existent. There were some big ones, but, you know, I heard, uh, I was watching Ray from Philly was doing a broadcast recently, and he talked about the fact that when we were younger, you know, Ray and I are almost the exact same age. He's a little older than me, but we came through the hobby in the early 70s, or, or not early 70s, the mid to late 70s, mid 70s into the early 80s. And we got into the, the autographed fad, the card show fad, Right as things were taken up, taking off in the late 80s and the early 90s, the boom, the first boom in card collecting. And every weekend, every weekend, there was a card show within driving distance. Doesn't matter where, in a mall somewhere, in a firehouse somewhere, in some little strip mall somewhere, there was always a show. Usually with one guy, some former player of your local team you'd never heard of, was signing because he knew somebody. Uh, every once in a while, there was there's still the big regional show. I'm, I live in a suburb of Philadelphia. The Philly show is like the oldest continuously running show in existence. It's a very well-known show, very popular with people around the country, even. And the Philly show used to be at the, what was called the George Washington Convention Center and always had a free, free autograph available to you from some former Philly nobody ever heard of. Those were the good old days. Those were the days that people started being crazy and collecting cards. You don't have that anymore. You don't have the situation where there's a card show every weekend with a free signer. If you're lucky, you got a card show every once a month somewhere nearby. And you, then you got the big ones uh, and the national, of course. But that's when you knew. When there was a groundswell of activity because people loved the hobby, that's when you knew the card, um, the state of the hobby was excellent, was, was growing. If you look at today, the state of the hobby, I think, is growing. And it's not because of who attended the National. It's not because of the price, the fact that the, um, was it the, the, the uh, Mickey Mantle 9 went for $12.6 million. That's, or it was, I think it was 9.5 went for that. It's not because they just set a world record for the price of a card. 
that's not why you can tell the hob the state of the hobby is growing. You can tell the state of the hobby is growing because more YouTubers are making content than ever before. You can tell the state of the hobby is growing because um, the, the card shows are coming back. There's more card shows than there had been in the past. Not not back in the late 80s, early 90s. We haven't reached that craziness yet. Uh, but card shows are popping up more and more often. People are opening card shops. You know, a shout out to John Jabs. Uh, sorry, his didn't succeed, but people are opening card shops where they hadn't been card shops forever. The state of the hobby is good, not because of people attending the national, not because of the price realized at auction houses. The state of the hobby is good because we collectors are interacting with each other more than ever before. They have the tradingcarddatabase.com. That is a fantastic thing that's encouraging trading. You know, I there's there's billions of auction houses these days selling cards and doing that. That doesn't make the state of the hobby good. That just means, you know, more and more people are selling their cards. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. If people are getting rid of their cards, is that good? It's good if you're the person who wants one, and maybe it's good if you're the person who's selling it and gets the money. It doesn't mean the state of the hobby is good. The state of the hobby is good when people love what they're doing in collecting these cards. And again, I think YouTube has been the biggest boom in the hobby in quite a while because it lets us all talk to each other. It lets us all share our passion for this hobby um, and again, I, I, I'm railing a little bit about, um, when I say the state of the hobby, about auction houses and, and the national and, and dealers versus collectors. And there, that's always going to be the case. That's always going to exist. Um, I, I don't think it's appropriate to claim People should invest in cards. You have to, you got to get some PSA cards. You have to do this. You have to do that. I'm a set collector. Uh, I certainly have um, graded cards now. I mean, if you see behind me there, I've got sets. I've got books. I've got baubles. I have, I collect everything baseball. That's the other thing too. Um, people rarely, when they talk about the state of the hobby, they're more interested in cards than anything else. I don't remember anybody telling me the state of the hobby was good or bad because um, somebody didn't buy a jersey from Babe Ruth or Roberto Clemente. I don't remember everybody saying the price of the, the state of the hobby was bad because not enough people are buying vintage baseballs or figurines. It's always cards. And the hobby is much more than cards. It's sports memorabilia. Um, so that's another reason I say don't talk to me about card prices and box collations and the print run of cards. That doesn't define the state of the hobby to me. To me, the state of the hobby is whether or not people are interested in the, the collectible you're, you're talking about. And I think people got tired of it when the cards were being mass produced. People got tired of it when every card produced started going insanely expensive. People got tired of it, but, you know, they're making cards in sufficient numbers where they're valuable, but not too valuable. They're making cards with um, various brands and manufacturers that everybody can afford. And uh, maybe the grading is good because it does create a little bit of value for your card graded. So the the manufacturers have spun they're making cards more affordable more fun and but more than anything i think the youtube community is really what's making this hobby great because it lets us share our collections it lets us see what everybody else is doing that's where the passion for collecting is coming from in my opinion we're all seeing regular people collecting and creating fantastic collections of cards. We're not all Barry Hopper. You know, we're not all these legendary collectors. We're just regular people 
who found a way to invest a couple of you know, discretionary dollars and put together a fantastic collection of cards. Why do we do that? We do it because we like it, but we also want to share. And now you're not going to invite a thousand people to walk into your house and look at your collection, but doing it by video on YouTube, it gives you that same ability without someone tramping through your house. And it does it, it lets you do that with people around the world. So, in my opinion, the state of the hobby is wonderful, has been wonderful, really, because people are passionate about it and people want to share their collection. Now they can. So, you know, it's a long video. I, I wanted to rail a little bit, share my opinion. I hope you guys appreciated that. I would love to hear from everybody else in something like this. I want everybody else to like take a time and talk about what they think is the state of the hobby. And again, in my opinion, the state of the hobby is fantastic. And one of the biggest drivers of that success is the YouTube community. Your average guy in whatever part of the country or world he may be, having the ability to share his collection with somebody else. Because people around the world sharing their collection defines the state of the hobby and the state of the baseball card sports card sports memorabilia world is in excellent shape because of that so i hope you enjoyed that um please consider like subscribing commenting if you do um i really appreciate the sport um come back again on uh wednesday we'll have another trivia question and prize to give away all right thanks for watching take care